The main story in this week's edition of Recap Ethiopia will give coverage to the water hyacinth known as Mbuch, which is posing a threat to the source of the Nile, the Lake Tana, and other major lakes in the country. Stay tuned to hear about the cause, effects, and response to the water hyacinth in the Ethiopian context, as well as some innovative solutions emanating from within the country and other international sources. We will also see other stories that caught the attention of many during this week. Issues like the assessment paper issued by the National Electoral Board of Ethiopia, the creation of a new subsidy in the capital, and the decision by the Chinese Aviation Agency banning flights from Addis to Shanghai due to the recurrent reports of COVID-19 cases in the country will be covered. I'm Wangil Tammene, and this is Recap Ethiopia. Our first story relates to the upcoming six national and regional elections that are set to take place in the current Ethiopian year, which spans between September 11, 2020 and September 11, 2021. In an interesting turn of events, the National Electoral Board of Ethiopia released an assessment paper regarding potential amendments to the electoral process in an election year. In an assessment paper released on Wednesday, October 21, 2020, the board raised serious concerns related to the effect that amendments to the electoral process may cause to the work of the board in terms of both resources and the timeline for the upcoming national and regional elections. The electoral board asked the government to consider serious implications that such amendments may have on the work of the board reminding relevant government bodies of the timeline set by the parliament for the electoral board to hold elections within the current Ethiopian year. The electoral board also recalled provisions from the constitution, namely article 104 and 105 of the constitution that detail amendment rules asking the parliament and relevant bodies in the government to hold consultations with the electoral board, political parties, and other stakeholders in accordance with the constitution. Not much is known about this developing story, according to the assessment paper by the National Electoral Board of Ethiopia. The next story brings us to Addis Ababa, where the city council met on Tuesday, passing two notable decisions. The first one was the appointment of Serfeshwal Nukusi and other officials to different positions. In addition to Serfeshwal, who was appointed as the speaker of the council, the council also approved the appointment of several other government officials to the council. Another development following the city council's meeting was the creation of another subsidy, taking the total number of subsidies to 11. The decision was made following the unanimous vote by the council accepting the legislation that would restructure subsidies and what it does in the city. The decision does not introduce new land to the Addis Ababa map, according to the city council. Instead, the decision taken would result in portions of land from the Yekka and Boli subsidies being combined to form a new subsidy called the Lamikura subsidy. According to the city council, the new decision was taken to reflect the population of the city and to increase the inclusiveness of public services in the city. In news related to the coronavirus pandemic, this week the Chinese Aviation Authority announced that it would ban flights from Addis Ababa to Shanghai due to large numbers of coronavirus cases amongst persons that traveled that route. The decision came after 15 passengers tested positive on a flight from Addis to Shanghai, which violates the China circuit rule. This has resulted in the Ethiopian Airlines being benched for the next five weeks without flights in that route in the prescribed period. The story does not end here. It was later known that all of the passengers that had tested positive to the virus received their pre-departure test certificates from the same Chinese-owned COVID-19 testing center known as the Silk Road General Hospital. In line with this, the airline has banned the hospital as an acceptable institution to get the pre-departure certificates. The airline said the following in regards to this. We are discussing the matter with Chinese authorities to restore our operation. Meanwhile, we are informing our passengers not to test with the above-mentioned hospital since we have suspended the acceptance of PCR test results from this hospital. This is not the first time that Addis Shanghai route has been banned 
due to concerns associated with coronavirus pandemic. The airline was su subjected to similar decisions that banned flights from Addis to Shanghai for a week starting in August after five passengers tested positive. This ban was between August 27 and September 3, 2020. Let's go to this week's major issue. In this episode, we will talk about the water hyacinth that is threatening major water bodies across the country. Focusing on the first victim of the water hyacinth, Lake Anna, this week's main segment will talk about embut or hyacinth, its origins, its impact on socioeconomic and other aspects in life, as well as the response being given by the government to this dangerous weed. So what do we know about embut? The scientific name for the water hyacinth is Icornia crassipes. The water hyacinth is native to the hydropite native to the tropical and subtropical parts of the South America. Scientists say that the water hyacinth is very problematic and threatening, especially when it's spread outside its native area. The water hyacinth or embut is a fast growing and free floating aquatic plant, which is threatening the water flow of the Lake Anna, as well as the ecosystem of the indigenous plants and diverse aquatic species of the lake. According to a study by three Ethiopian scholars called Belacho Getnetinio, Work Eyewari Asafa, and Ayano Gezi, published on September 2, 2020 on the Open Access Academic website, PLOS One, the water hyacinth or embut is one of the most prevalent invasive aquatic plants known for its reproduction abilities because of its rapid growth rate. According to the study, which is titled The Socioeconomic Effects of Water Hyacinth, in Lake Dana, northwestern Ethiopia, the water hyacinth has spread to most countries that fall between 40 degree north and 40 degree south lines. Ethiopia was first introduced to the water hyacinth about 60 years ago when it was spotted on the Goga Reservoir and the Awash River in 1965. At the time, the severity of the spread as well as impact of the hyacinth was not as serious as the current invasion. The government was able to control it with relative ease. After that, the hyacinth was supported in different lakes and other water bodies throughout the 1980s and the 1990s. There is no consensus about this, but according to several reports, the water hyacinths arrived at Lake Tana in September 2011, roughly about nine years ago. At the time of the discovery, the hyacinths only covered about 10 hectares. By 2018, about a third of the lake, roughly 100 square meters, was covered by the water hyacinths. Yes, that is how fast the water hyacinths can spread. In 2020, this number is reported to be as high as 194 square meters, double the amount in 2018. So why is embut such a serious issue, especially in the context of Lake Tana? The answer to this can be approached from different levels, local, national, as well as regional interest. What is meant by this is that not only does Embuch threaten to affect Ethiopia's largest lake, it also brings with it immense socioeconomic and political implications at local, national, and regional levels. Let's explore this a bit. To the local community, in the Amara region where Lake Tana is located, it is everything. The lake, which is located in the northwestern highlands of the country, is a source of irrigation to the farmers around it, an alternative source of food with the diverse population of fish it presents, a means of transportation from one Wereda to another, and an immense source of income due to tourism value it possesses. Since the arrival of the Hysons, however, this has been really affected. Crop production has taken a significant hit. Transportation is becoming increasingly difficult, which in turn is affecting local movement as well as access to islands for tourists. And due to the danger and boat processes on the diverse species of fish in the lake, fishery is also taking a significant blow. According to the study mentioned earlier, crop production has taken a huge hit due to the hyacinths. The finding of the study showed that during the peak season of the infestation, 43.4% of the cropped area is vulnerable to the water hyacinths, out of which 437 was severely affected. About 25% was moderately affected by the hyacinths, while the remaining was affected in a scattered manner. The study also said that in areas that were severely affected, about 75 to 100% of the crops were destroyed by the hazards, while in moderately affected areas, about a quarter to a third of the crops were destroyed by the weed. 
This is a serious issue because 80% of the residents surrounding the Lake Tana depend on crop production. As such, the hyacinth threatens food security and livelihood of the residents of the areas surrounding Lake Tana. Another source of income and livelihood affected by the import is fishery. About 40,000 people living around the lake are engaged in fishery as livelihood out of which around 3,000 are commercially engaged in the sector. Even before Imbuch, the production of fish by the lake was a downfall due to a wide range of reasons, including illegal fishing activities and climate change induced justification. However, since the Imbuch infestation on the lake has happened, the problem has been compounded. But studies show that the impact of the hyacinths on fishery in the lake Tana varies from species to species. For instance, according to the study by Bella Chocate Network, Iewari, and Ayano Gazi, while species such as the Oreochromis niloticus and Labiobarbus species have been affected by the hyacinths, local community reported that the species such as catfish are still available in relative abundance. However, the study offers no scientific justification for why the catfish species is not affected that remains to be investigated. Granted, this is a silver lining. However, the same study suggests that the amount of fish caught daily has taken a significant hit due to the hyacinths. Before Mwuch, the study said that fishermen would catch 28 kilograms of fish daily during spawning seasons. This number has gone down by 46.4% since the hyacinths infected the lake, as fishermen catch on average 13 kilograms of fish a day in the same spawning season. This further creates a serious problem to the local community in terms of both food security and affecting the livelihood of many households. Obstruction of movement and the elimination of food sources of the fish due to the hyacinths are among the reasons for the reduction of fish caught per day. There is also a danger for this problem to further affect the Tana and fishery on the lake. Experiences from Cameroon and the impact of the hyacinths on the Woiri River basin, where a 90% decline in fish caught per day was observed due to the hyacinths. This deadly weed has also had other implications in terms of the local community. Effects on transportation, which is affected by the reduction of water volume, as well as obstruction of movement of boats, is one of these effects. Another is the impact of the hyacinths on the food supply for the livestock, which is highly dependent on communal grazing lands in the areas surrounding the lake. These grazing lands continue to be affected by the hyacinths compounding and boots presence on the community. Finally, another notable impact on the local community is in regards to water supply. The community, which is highly dependent on the lake and its tributaries, is facing serious water supply problems due to the hyacinths. This in turn raises public health concerns. At the national level, the impact of the hyacinths is mainly related to tourism and the contribution of Lake Tana and its islands that host monasteries to the country's tourism sector. There are around 37 islands on Ethiopia's largest lake. Out of these 37 islands, about 21 host monasteries that are frequented by the local and international tourists. In an interview with CGTN TV about two years ago, a tour guide told reporters that due to the hyacinths, Boat riders are having a hard time getting tourists to the shores of islands. Granted, the tourism sector has had more evil adversaries, such as the coronavirus pandemic, than the water hazards. However, it is compounding the challenges in the sector, and its impact cannot be ignored due to its immense repercussions. Another national concern relates to one of the country's biggest projects, the Grand Ethiopia Renaissance Dam. Lake Tana and its tributaries are the primary sources of water supply to the Blue Nile. In a meeting held with opposition leaders in July, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed echoed these concerns, claiming that there is no Abai without Tana, while explaining the relevance of projects such as the Green Legacy, which seek to address climate changes induced challenges in the country. Therefore, it is clear that the threat is posed by the Mbuch or Hyacinths is one that requires due attention because it directly or indirectly affects the success of the GERD. This also makes the problem of Regional One as the Nile is the water source for the millions of people living in the east and north part of Africa. Let's move on to the response being given to the water hyacinths. 
Since the Hisense was first spotted in 2011, several community-based and governmental-level responses have been given to mitigate the impacts of the Hisense. However, these responses are considered to be inconsistent and lacking as the Hisense has continued to ravage the lake and affect the communities living around the lake. Due to the limited time we have, WECAP has decided to focus on innovations that have tried to mitigate the impacts of the hyacinths and the initiatives by the community to deal with this weed. To start with the different initiatives put in place to save Anna Lake from the hyacinths, we can mention online campaigns with hashtags like hashtag save Anna and its Amharic equivalent hashtag Tanananimitatek, as well as associations such as the Tana Tributaries Charity Organization, which was created three years ago. Celebrities, academicians, politicians, and members of the diaspora participated in the online campaigns that aimed to create awareness and salvage public support for efforts against the Hisons, as well as raise funds necessary for such efforts. In addition to this, youth from the Amhara region and other parts of the country have in different times participated in several campaigns aimed at weeding out the Hisons from the lake and its tributaries. Other innovative efforts from academic institutions and local innovators have also emerged out of this immense challenge the country is facing. From innovators like Geto Erustu, who built machines that can weed out the hyacinths to similar innovations from universities such as the one in Gondar and Bahardar, are good examples for this. Important machineries, both by businesses and the government, have also been deployed in different times, though lacking consistency. For instance, the innovation by Gato sought to address the lack of speed and recurrent need for maintenance of the boats currently in use to weed out the hyacinths. To do that, he traveled to Bahardar to notice that the problem can be corrected by using materials available in the country. After returning to Addis, Gato and Innovator built a machine that is capable of weeding out up to 70,000 weeds in an hour, which was a strong contribution from the innovator. Another example can be the solution that was put forth by Merigeta Bele Adamu, a local traditional doctor who came out in September claiming to have found the cure for the hyacinths. The cure was announced in an event held by the association known as the Ethiopia Yelikauntina Yemuhran Maber. Merigeta Bele had said at that time that he had found a pesticide made from organic plants, which is expected to mitigate the impacts of the hyacinths on the Tana Lake. He noted that his innovation not only addresses the hyacinths, but also does not cause risk factors associated with inorganic pesticides currently in use. The effect of this deadly weed is severe, and if this problem is not addressed soon, it will catalyze the loss of a major resource. Therefore, the responsible stakeholders and the society at large need to participate in solving this insurmountable problem. Want to see more of Free Cup Ethiopia? Like, share, and subscribe to our channel.